Hi guys and welcome to another Mr Pollock biology video on statistics. We're looking at standard error and 95% confident limits today. Uh, this is for A2 level students doing their ISA or the EMPA, which is the Unit 6 Practical Assessment. Um, and this video is pitched for AQA students, but if you are another A level candidate, it's probably a little bit helpful for you too. Or if you generally like statistics. Who knows? Let's get started. Our objectives today, you're going to understand when to use standard error with 95% confidence limits and you're going to apply the standard error test and interpret the results. Nice and straightforward. So what is standard error? Well, standard error looks for differences between the means of different measurements in different groups of data. So it's comparing the means from two different, two or more different groups of measurements um, and looking to see if there is a significant difference between those. So for example, you could compare the height of males and the height of females, and you'd be looking to see if one sex was significantly taller or shorter than the other. And when do we use it? Well, for this, we can use our really helpful flowchart that you get given it in your student statistics pack. Um, if we look through the flowchart, if we're using measurement and looking for differences, then we're going to be using standard error. So I guess the next logical stage from there is to say, well, we know when to use it, we know what it is, but how do we actually apply it? So a couple of stages for you guys. First one, as ever, we write a null hypothesis. Secondly, we're going to calculate the mean and then the standard deviation for each set of results. Then thirdly, we're going to calculate the standard error for each group. And then finally, we're going to plot a graph of our data and we're going to interpret it. So let's launch into the first step, which is the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis in this case states that we will see no difference between the two means we are comparing. So in the example of the, the heights of males and females, our null hypothesis would be that there is no difference between the height of males and the height of females. From there, we go on to calculate the mean. Now, you do need to calculate two means if you're doing two groups of data. So you're going to add up the numbers in the group, um, and you're going to divide by however many measurements that you took. And you must calculate, like I said, separate means for each group of data. I don't think I really need to go through how to calculate the mean in a great amount of detail. Uh, you guys should know that. Okay, so next one, standard deviation. Uh, this is a bit trickier, and the best way to do it really is to use a calculator. There are so many different kinds of calculator out there that I'm not going to be able, sadly, to make videos showing exactly how to do standard deviation on every single calculator. Although in the future I will do a quick how to calculate a bash uh, standard deviation using one common kind of calculator here in the UK. Um, if you want to do it by hand, you can. It'll take more time, but hey, here's a video that shows you how to do it. If you just click on the little picture there, uh, that'll whip you away to another video of mine. So, so, calculate your mean, then calculate your standard deviation for each sample, and then we move on to calculating standard error. This formula is given in your statistics booklet, and it is standard error is equal to the standard deviation divided by root n. So the basically, to put it in words, that's divide the standard deviation by the square root of the number of measurements in that group. Okay, so if we go back to the, the height example, um, you would do the standard deviation of the males divided by the square root of how many males you took um, data from. And it's important, again, you must calculate separate standard deviations, um, oh, sorry, standard errors for each group. From there, we can calculate what are called our confidence limits. And we work at 95% confidence limits, which means that we are 95% certain that our results are good. Or, you know, the other way you can look at this is we can call it P is equal to 0.05, where there is only a 5% probability that our results occurred due to chance. Um, and the way we work this out is to get those confidence limits, we plot them as error bars, um, and we look two standard errors above and below the mean of our data. So the mean plus two lots of standard error is going to be our upper error bar, and the mean minus two lots of standard error is going to be our lower error bar. And again, you must calculate error bars for each group. Be really careful with this. From there, we can draw a graph. And what we do is we plot our data like this. So we plot a bar for each group, and the bar is going to go to the height of x bar, which is the mean. 
So here we're illustrating the mean for females is the height of the bar. Um, and then our error bars, the upper bar, is here. And the lower bar, the lower error bar, is here. These will be different for each group, obviously. From then, we can from there we can analyze our results and say what's actually going on here. So it's a case of looking at the error bars and seeing if there's an overlap between the groups. In this case, there we go, there we go. No, there's no overlap. And what we do if there's no overlap is we reject the null hypothesis. However, so, oh, sorry, in this case, that means that there is a significant difference in height between males and females. But if we mess with the data a little bit and change the heights of the bars, in this case, do the, do the error bars overlap? Yes, yes, they do. So in this situation, we would accept the null hypothesis. So to interpret your result, if the error bars overlap, we accept the null hypothesis, and if the error bars do not overlap, we reject the null hypothesis. So let's work through an example of this. Let's look at hand spans. So let's imagine that a student is measuring the hand spans of males and females. That's the distance from your thumb tip to your pinky tip, or your little fingertip. Our null hypothesis here is going to be that there will be no difference between the hand spans of males and females. From there, we need some data. So here's some data for males, totally made up. And the mean of this data, adding them all together and dividing by 9, which is how many data points we have, um, the mean is 206.11 millimetres. If we work out the standard deviation of that, the standard deviation is 16.15 millimetres. Uh, again, uh, I would work this out by hand or by calculator and show you, but it would just take too much time. So watch my other video and it'll show you exactly how I came to that conclusion. From there, we can work out the standard error, which of course is the standard deviation divided by the root of the number of samples we have. So 16.15 divided by root 9 is the same as 16.15 divided by 3. So our standard error here is 5.38. Repeat the same thing for females. So there's females, there's some data. Mean, 176.22. Standard deviation of 11.12. Standard error of 11.12 divided by root 9, which is the same as 11.12 divided by 3, which is 3.71. Next step from here is to calculate our upper and lower error bars. So for the upper error for the males, we're looking at 206.11, which is the mean, plus two lots of the standard error, which gives us 216.87. And then to calculate the lower error bar, we just do 206.11, which was the mean, take away two lots of the standard error, which gives us 195.35. Females, upper error is going to be the mean, which is 176.22 plus two lots of standard error, gives us 186.64. Lower error is 176.22 minus two lots of standard error, which is 168.8. If we put that on a, uh, a graph, it should look something like this. Our next step from there is to look at the error bars, and we'll see that they do not overlap. And that means that we can reject the null hypothesis. So our conclusion from there is that um, there is a significant difference in hand span between males and females. So to summarise this whole thing, standard error test to see if there's a significant difference between two means, and if the error bars overlap, we accept the null hypothesis. If they do not overlap, we reject the null hypothesis. I hope that's been useful for you guys. Thanks very much for watching. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. Don't forget I've also done videos on how to, how to calculate standard deviation by hand, and also on the chi-squared test as well, so be sure to check those out. Thanks very much, guys. Take care.